In this video, I'm going to go over how to repair a home theater subwoofer amp for about $15. Uh, so to start with, here's the original amp and crossover board that this sub came with. Uh, the amp bit the dust. Um, normally when I do electronic repair, I like to do it at a component level. Uh, but this guy, the MOSFETs were fine, I had nothing obvious. So what I did is I see on eBay they have these guys right here. It's a TDA 7293. It's a 100 watt audio amplifier that's uh, capable down to 4 ohms for about $6 shipped to your door. So I thought I'd give it a shot. I ordered up a couple. This is what they look like. Here is the amp board. Now this does not have a low pass crossover on it. I mean you probably could reverse engineer the low pass crossover that comes with it and figure out which is your ins and outs and powers, but for about $6. Uh, you can get a crossover board, low pass crossover. Now this is easily, it's easy to wire up. You don't even have to solder it if you don't want to. It just has the ins and outs labeled right here. You need to supply it with 12 volts. Send your crossed over signal to the input of your amp board and uh, you got it set. So here I'll show you the inside. I already have one. This is already finished with the amp board in it already. Uh, here's a crossover board two potentiometers now. One is for gain and one is the frequency adjust. No longer. This used to be the 180 switch here to flip the polarity. I didn't bother hooking that back up. So that's just a plug to plug the hole. Um, but you need to mount the amp chip. This guy here, you need to mount that on the heat sink. So just reused the heat sink that the amp came with and also the power supply was fine. There's nothing wrong with the factory power supply. These boards need a positive and negative rail to to work um, and that's also the way the factory amp board is too. It has a negative 33 volt supply and a positive 33 volt supply and that is compatible with these little universal boards here. So you just have to uh, Probe out your positive, common, and negative, and feed it into your amp board. And also, I uh, just, you know, where you left all the power switches and fuses and power cord can all stay the same. None of that needs to change. I did have to add a second line in RCA plug, uh, so that way I could have both left and right channels uh, run to the sub. That was easy just to drill out and mount. Um, one thing I did notice is these come with a knockoff Nichicon caps, which after a week of running, I'm seeing is already bulging. If you look at the top of this cap right here, it's already bulging. A couple of things with this low pass crossover board is it does need 12 volts to work. There's your DC, DC 12 volts in right here. Uh, this power supply didn't have a good, good power source for that, so... What I ended up doing is, let's see here, right up on the bottom of this heat sink, which you can't see, I just added a 7812 voltage regulator. Right there, you can kind of see it. Uh, and that's being fed off the positive 33 volt rail. You might want to check the spec sheets on 7812. I think 33 volts is probably its max limit for input. And then that can feed the crossover board. And also this crossover board, the inputs, they're not low inputs. And the ad doesn't say, uh, it's input level, but I found out they're actually high level inputs, which works out nice for me, uh, which I prefer so that way you can just adjust your gains once till it's balanced and sounds right, and then just use the master volume on the amp. Just one main volume will then adjust it. It, it, it adjusts for you then. You don't have to readjust your gains every time you adjust your main speaker volume. So I actually prefer the RCAs being high level just because you can run the speakers out and uh, set your settings once and you're good to go. You can even reuse the power LED too. Um, 12 volt off the 12 volt regulator, I just use a 1K resistor. So now the power LED works when you flip power on, it's kind of nice. Uh, one thing I recommend before you even go as far as ordering parts for your sub, ohm out your speaker. Make sure you didn't blow the speaker. Um, this is a four ohm speaker and it ohms out close to four. You're not always gonna get exact uh, ohms when you check ohms on an inductive load it's a little trickier than just checking resistance but anyways 
Make sure you don't have a one ohm load or a zero ohm load because a lot of times the, the coils will short when they get overheated and they just blow up your new amp if you hook up a, uh, you know, blowing sub to a new amp. Um, so as I started to get ready to replace these bad caps, there's one more thing I wanted to, uh, one more little tip to give you when, when doing something like this. This tab here, you always want to isolate uh, the tab from the, the chassis. Um, because this, this chassis is going to be tied to line ground and you don't always want that. You never know what pin this heat sink is going to be connected to and you could short things out and blow things up. So even the, the regulator too, I went ahead and put that on one of these little isolation thermal pads. Let's go ahead and get this bad cap out of here, huh? Double-sided board is going to take a little bit of heat to get her out. Is I should have turned down my other soldering iron. This guy's giving me a little bit of trouble. One week old <laughs> Nichicon capacitor. See a little, little bulge on the bottom there too. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and put some new ones in. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.